You're watching the New Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Since its inception, Amazon Web Services, AWS, has been the best place for customers to build and run open source software in the cloud. AWS is proud to support open source projects, foundations, and partners. Dimitri, I liked what you did there. So how about Valky, the power project? Let's put our Thank microphones in. Right. Okay. That's right. Go Valky. It sounds like some kind of Norse god kind of thing. Yeah. Well, Valkyrie is a northern god. It is, isn't it? It's true. Yeah. I yeah. Think we, well, I, I also thought it stand for key value. Well, so yes. the but origin Valky. the origin of Valky came from someone's suggestion of Valkyrie, ah. and I'm like, nobody can spell Valkyrie. We okay. need something that people can spell, and we came up with Valky based on that. I got it. I got yes. it. So let's go around and just say hello, Ping. Why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, sure. Hey. Hi, everybody. Yeah, nice to be here. My name is Ping. I'm a software engineer at uh, Google. So I spend a lot of time working on database technologies. I uh, am an active contributor to Valky. Used to be on the Redis community as well. So I'm really happy to be here, answer any questions, to talk about the uh, status and the uh, future. Great. Dimitri? Yeah, my name is Dmitry Polyakovsky. I'm a software engineer at Oracle. So I'm a tech lead for the Oracle Redis service. And I'm a longtime Redis user and excited to be part of the Valky initiative. Madeline. Yes, so I'm Madeline. I am a longtime contributor to the Redis project. I technically was the original person that forked Valky, but <laughs> yeah. Placeholder KV. Well, technically it was placeholder KV, that's <laughs> true. Uh, but yeah, and I'm also a uh, principal engineer at AWS and I'm a big proponent of open source. Excellent. So I thought we would start just with a little bit of background on Valky. And so it's mid April, a few weeks ago. The Linux Foundation announced that there will be Valky, this fork of Redis. And today you're releasing a new version of Valky, is that right? That's correct. Version 7.2.5, which is based off of Redis 7.2. Okay. And so, to meet you, why Valky? Why, what, what happened? Did, there was a license change of some kind, as we understand. Uh, Yes, so again, the Redis technology has been around for many years and it's extremely popular, but the licensing change kind of forced this. And uh, we're just excited about having more flexibility with the Valky project about where we get to take this technology. So Ping, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about where we are right now with the project. We're at 7.2.5 and you know, what, what, what have we seen so far with the project in, in terms of since it got started? Yeah, uh, contributors, that kind of thing. The contributor, okay. Uh, yeah, right now we're at 7.2.5. Uh, I think the goal for us is to get full compatibility out as soon as possible to maintain that continuity, uh, So, which is very important for the community so that they have a reliable source of um, technology they can depend on going forward. Right now we have already have like many contributors uh, who used to be active members of Redis community and then they come over here and then help us out. I think. We are probably the most active uh, community right now on, among all the forks. And I last just checked, and then there are like more than 10,000 uh, 10, of stars of our uh, project already. Wow. So this is like very amazing in my opinion. In a very short period of time, we gather that much momentum. And then we showed that uh, we can definitely carry the spirit of the open source forward. So what about the end users? You know, they have, they have their own priorities. They've worked with Redis up to, date, up to this date. Now that they have to get used to Valky, you know, what are some of the, what are they saying? What is the, some of the feedback you're getting? Yeah, and so I think what we've really seen is that a lot of the end users of Redis are very encouraged by all of the corporations getting behind the project. As you can see, we have AWS, Google, and Oracle here all representing, as well as a host of other companies that are getting behind the Linux Foundation announcement. The Linux Foundation is another big reason that a lot of people are excited about that. There's a lot of companies that have formally announced support, such as Percona, such as Heroku, such as Ericsson. And I think end users are really seeing this as a very positive sign that this, this project is going to do really well. Dimitri, how do we get to this point where you needed a fork? Just for the people out there who may not be as familiar with what's going on, what happened? Well, so the Redis itself for the long time has been licensed under BSD license. And it was very cloud friendly, very open source friendly. And a few years ago when Redis, the company introduced modules, they licensed them slightly differently. But what they did a month ago is they changed the license going forward for the core Redis product. And that kind of forced the hand. You know, when I'm doing my research, you know, 
Valky Ping is resuming the work that was done before 7.4. So on yes. Redis, is that correct? Valky is based on yes. 7.2, Dude. which still okay. has the BSD style license, that is correct. How do you really view how you're approaching the resumption of that effort that happened before the code, before the license was changed? Mm. What are you resuming? What are you doing with the project now that resumes all the work that was done before? I think resuming uh, is definitely the top priority for us right now. We want to make sure there's a smooth path for everyone who is currently on Redis 7.2 to be able to switch over with um, zero hassle, with zero downtime, and then they can carry over their business as usual. I think that's the top priority. Beyond that, uh, we do have a lot of great plans uh, out there. Like we, want to, uh, we would like to improve the reliability much, much better, and then also the performance enhancement is also, also critical to our community as well. And then beyond that, I mean, yeah, there's even more features, and we can talk about more uh, if we have right. time. Yeah. So, Madeline, tell me about what a license change causes for an end user. What are the disruptions that they face? Why is that continu the con continuity so important? That's a good question. So, a lot of people just look at the fact that the new license that Redis is putting out is free for end users. But what they're really not seeing is that all of the contributors that currently worked on Redis often won't work with that new license. A lot of the big companies are really looking for these free, open source, very permissive licenses to work with and contribute to. So the end user will really just see less contributions to the product that they're currently using. And they'll see slower bug fixes, slower momentum overall. That's a continued continuity that you're looking to reestablish is to like help you know, prevent the slowdown. Right, that's the, that's the continuity ping and has really been kind of hammering home. It's like, we'll be able to keep working on everything that we were previously working on in the new project. All the new features, all the bug fixes we're working on, you'll see them all in Valky. So, Dimitri, what are you doing on the project specifically with that continuity? What is kind of your work that you're doing specifically? Right, so I'm very excited about modules. It's something I've been actually wanting to do for a long time but never had an opportunity to do so. So modules or plugins or whatever we're going to call them in Valky, they'll allow to extend the core Valky functionality. And I think that's going to give us a good balance of keeping the core product small and focused, but then having these additional extensions of plugins. That modules is my thing. And I'm particularly interested in uh, helping users build modules on Rust. So Redis has a very rich ecosystem of various libraries. But if you want to build Redis code itself, then you have to work in C but there's an opportunity to attract more engineers who are comfortable with the Rust programming language, and I want to make it easier. So modules, is that, is, that an, is that a new generation of what was in the project before? Yeah, so Redis itself has been supporting modules for about six years, Yeah. and there have been some modules built, and they, ironically, some of them were licensed differently, so you couldn't, you couldn't use them as easily as the Redis itself, but I think there can be very interesting new features built into Valky, but they might not belong in the core of Valky. So they can be used. To, they can be built as modules. But is that the most important work right now, the modules, or is it's that a, more? It's what a good you question, wanted. but yeah. it's something that I'm excited about. Something and you're I excited think about. that's an area where I can contribute. How about so, you? What are you? Yeah. So about? Ping, what are you doing? What is the kind of the work that you really want to focus on to, to kind of main kind of build on that continuity? I guess um, my interest is in the core, the core yeah. engine, the core part of the engine, maybe to support the, uh, the module ecosystem. Sure. So um, there's definitely a lot of work left there in the uh, previous project. Um, again, like I mentioned, the reliability, performance, those will be my uh, interesting uh, areas there. Um, so that will, yeah, I will spend a lot of time on that. So is that the core kind of matter that you're looking at right now? Is that, you know, is, you know maintaining that core thinking of new features. I mean, how do you balance this for the user who's been using Redis for so long, but now have to face kind of, you know, this new reality? Like, what, how are you thinking about being in their shoes? Right, so we obviously see a, lot, see a lot of users currently on Redis 7.2, and what Valky provides today, they're probably going to stick with Redis. It's sort of the same thing. And so we're really trying to predict what do we think Valky users are going to want in Valky 8, Valky 9, Valky 10. And a lot of what Dimitri and Ping just mentioned are sort of in, in, in line with that. So we need to you know, improve performance, improve memory efficiency, improve all those fundamentals, make it easier to manage. But we also need to look into how 
to make it easier for people to use extensions. That's a big feature that a lot of people have been asking. There's features like JSON, search, vector similarity is a very hot topic these mm. days. And the work that Dimitri is going to do is going to help enable that in the fullness of time. So what's the primary work that you're looking to do that you are doing? Well, right, everything? <laughs> right now I'm playing politics mostly. Yeah. But I'm hoping to really get back to Cluster V2, which is a feature I've been pushing for a long time in the core, which is to make Valky Cluster easier to manage, more scalable, and support easier manageability for both the providers and individual users. Politics speaks to the governance, really, doesn't it? Yeah, and not just that, but there's a lot of corporations involved. We had to go work with the Lynx Foundation to get us adopted. There's a bunch of companies who have competing interests. There's a lot of companies reaching out to us to say, like, hey, we would like XYZ from the project. You know, how do we how do we know we should support Valky as opposed to something else? So I've been doing a lot of that recently, but I am really hoping to get back to more of the engineering side, which is what I'm much more comfortable with. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, but you all work with competing companies yourselves. True. So what is the processes that you put in place to help kind of like minimize those, you know, competing forces? Well, open source is well known for if you build an open source, it's better for everyone. Right. All of these big corporations have realized that it doesn't make sense for everyone to go build this independently. We should just build it once and build it in the open. And they find different ways to monetize and find differentiating value. So, Dimitri, then tell me, like, how does it work for Oracle when you're thinking about this project and how you think about it in terms of, you know, the, the, your, your role in the community and how you think about your customers. Why is this important to Oracle? Why is this project, of, you know, why does it matter? Well, Oracle currently has a managed Redis service, and we plan to continue supporting that. Again, personally, I am excited about Valky, and uh, you know, we've known each other for years, so we're going to collaborate effectively and help build Valky. How about Google? What's more important here is what's best for the community here. So we're here to support a community, and then... Um, but Google doesn't matter? No, Google does matter. Uh, it's balancing act, yes. And then uh, those questions will be worked out um, eventually, I think. Uh, so I'm really like, cannot comment on that too much yeah. at this point. Uh, yeah. Yes. But I think, yeah, in my opinion, community is, is all it matters at this moment. Yeah, so I, community I, has to succeed yeah I just yeah. ask these questions because yeah. you're definitely three different companies. You're yes. coming on a project. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of resources behind you, right? Yes. You know, and, and so there is that factor there. I mean, how do you, I mean, you probably view it similarly to them, but AWS always talks about its customers. Like, what does yeah. this matter? You I mean, know? open source is good for our customers. It's what we say consistently. Mm -hmm. AWS has already announced that we are fully behind Valky. It's important strategically. There's a lot of customers of ours that run Redis on, you know, Kubernetes or EC2. They run all across AWS, uh, you know, compute platforms, and so. AWS wants to make sure that its customers' interests are being protected, and we'll continue to do that. What are you doing to take into consideration the ecosystem itself? Because there's lots of varying needs in the ecosystem. Sure, yeah. So, And then there are actually different kinds of ecosystem. There's a client ecosystem, uh, and there's a module ecosystem. I consider them differently. I guess I think the best thing we can do is, again, to support them. Uh, going back to the continuity and the resumption call out there, I think this is a very important thing that we need to continue doing. Beyond that, we need to bring more value there, like better performance, more reliability, anything that can help the ecosystem to move forward. And then we know there are a lot of existing issues with the uh, current uh, ecosystem. For instance, there are many different types of implementation on the client side, and then they do things differently. So those uh, differences in the behavior sometimes confuse the customer. So being able to help the client ecosystem to consolidate on those uh, behaviors will be a big plus for everybody. Yeah, I would second that again. The great thing about Redis is the huge ecosystem, numerous libraries, and frequently you, people use Redis. They don't use Redis APIs directly. They have a library in whatever language they're using, and we certainly would not want to make drastic incompatible changes to disrupt that ecosystem. What changes have you made so far? So far, the only changes we've made are adding compatibility. We haven't made any backwards incompatible changes. Everything, every application that worked today on Redis will also work on Valky. Okay, so how do you kind of like think about prioritizing matters when it comes to the ecosystem? Right, so right now we're really looking to the community to be like, what do you want to see next? We announced that we're going to try to have a contributor summit sometime in the upcoming months to basically get everyone in the same room and be like, hey, what's most important to you guys? 
We're hoping to have an initial next major version sometime early in the fall. And that will just basically getting everything we currently have working on out the door. But after that, we're really looking to the community to tell us what are their needs, what do they want to see. And we're hoping to really make this a community-driven effort. What are they saying so far that they want? So far, we've just been hearing a lot of don't break things, uh -huh. which is yes. always our top priority. Yep. And yes. uh, AI, people love AI. That's oh. very trendy, I hear. So vector search, vector support, uh, those types of semantic caching workloads, I've heard quite a bit. So Dimitri, how does that, how is that starting to impact your thinking about modules then? Uh, absolutely. So what about building a vector similarity search module? What about building a module to do maybe secondary indexes? All kinds of things you can do with Redis or Valky with the right module, but keeping the core functionality the same. Right. So that keeps that continuity, that keeps that compatibility, and the people who choose to use the additional new features, they would install modules, and they would then use those modules only for the what they need. Ping, how would, how would you say what you're trying to improve on what had already existed before? What are some of like the new opportunities that you see with Valky that maybe you wouldn't have had with Redis? Yes, uh, actually even in today's talk, some questions came up there asking for uh, more, uh, strongly consistent uh, system and data tiering, things like that. Like again, I think this is going to be a community-driven uh, effort project. So really like, like to hear what community has to say. And I already mentioned to many people that I run into uh, on the conference to ask them just to provide our uh, uh, feedback to us through different channels. So we really like to hear all of them. And then we will make sure that what we are doing here are really the most important thing for the community, not just because we want to do them, just because they provide true value to everybody. So just in conclusion, what does the versioning cycle look like then for Valky? You know, you are, you did 7.2.5. What's coming up next? What do we see coming next? So we'll have more incremental past versions if we find bugs in 7.2. We're working on having our next major release by the end of the year. And our goal is to have one major version basically every year. And we have more or less committed to basically a three-year maintenance cycle. So we'll support 7.2 for a couple of years. And then starting with 8, we'll support it for three years. And so you'll kind of see a constant refresh probably around the same time every year. OK. Well, great. Well, thank you so much about, for talking about Valky. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.